Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've got a fun cord cutting app to show you today. I just stumbled across this last night on Reddit. This is called the MultiView app. You can get it in the Android or Apple stores and it runs on Apple TV, on Google TV devices, along with Android TVs, and it will work on phones and tablets. I've got it running on my Apple TV right now. And what I've got are four different TV channels coming over to my Apple TV here. And these are all coming off of my TV antenna. So I've got like an app, a YouTube TV uh, like experience here without the YouTube TV subscription. And what I'll do in this video is show you how it all works because in addition to getting over the air television, the app supports free streaming channels that you can mix in as well. And those streaming channels can come from your Plex server or from Tableau. Now the free streaming stuff only works on Apple TV at the moment. They're getting that ready for Android with a new update soon. So I'll demo this on my Apple TV, but I'll show you what the Android experience is like in a minute as well. So it's a fun little app here. It doesn't require an ongoing subscription, so you can play around with the free trial. And then if you like it, it's 10 bucks one time and you're done. So it is a relatively affordable option here. And why don't we take a look at this and see what it's all about. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I am paying for this app with my own funds. I'm currently in the trial mode, but I am going to uh, give the 10 bucks over to the developer to keep this going. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. This is not a sponsored review, nor did anyone review or approve what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's dive into this app now and see what it's all about. Now, admittedly, this app is very early in its development. You will encounter bugs. I have found the developer to be very responsive. He's hanging out in his Reddit subreddit, which I'll put in the video description so you can communicate and bring your ideas to the table as well. I think it's off to a really good start here. So you saw how it worked at the outset. I've got four different channels here. I can click the button here and zoom them in. When I move the cursor here, it will shift the audio to that particular stream as I move things around. So you can get the sound on one of these things as you go. You have some other templates you can set up though. So if I hit the back button here, I could, for example, have a three up uh, where I've got just three channels or I could do two channels here. So you have that as an option. You can also save these things too. So when you have it saved, and if I go back to the home screen here, uh, what you will see are these templates that it has already uh, saved here before. So here's our two up, here's our one up, and then here's one I did earlier with some Plex channels that I'll show you as well. So you don't have to set this up every time. You can save a layout and it will be in here for you when you jump back into the app. Now this app works with the HD Home Run, which is a great gateway tuning device. You can find these pretty much anywhere. I've been using these now for well over a decade. In full disclosure, they do sponsor things here on the channel from time to time, but we haven't had a sponsorship in quite some time, but I use this device every single day. And what it lets you do is connect a TV antenna here and then you plug it into your network here, and then pretty much anything in your house with a screen is able to tune into live television. And they have a very open architecture, so third-party developers, like the guy who made this app, can connect up very easily to these HD home run devices in the home and do some really cool stuff like this. And this is the sort of innovation that we see from small companies and even individuals to make the home viewing experience over the air that much better. So. Uh, why don't we build out one of these things from scratch so you can see how it works. What we're going to do is select the channel in here. And I can't tune into sports right now, given that these are all going to be heavily copyrighted. But what I can do is pick a side channel here. So I'll pick Bones here that's running on one of the side channels. You'll see that that uh, broadcast will immediately start playing here when I select that box. So I'll do another one here, and then I'll add a fourth one over here. I have to scroll down a little bit further here just because I have to find something that I can actually tune into. So maybe we'll do uh, bounce here. So now I've got four of these going. You saw how it worked before, and that's how easy this is to set up. If I go over to save here, that will save this as another uh, template that I can pull up. And then, of course, we can lose channels by hitting the uh, different sizing options here, too. Now, what I can also do in here is close this out. So if I don't want this one in there, I can just exit out. I can also edit and change the channel that's currently up. So I can do that as another option. 
and then I can swap things around here and move it to position three or four so you can kind of get things shifted around the way you want. Now, if you have an ATSC 3.0 compatible HD home run, it will tune into the video. However, my experience so far is that the audio doesn't work. The developer is working on that. He let me know that in his market, audio was working well, but here it isn't. So he's gonna try to troubleshoot that a bit. This does not though work with encrypted ATSC 3.0 broadcasts. The nation's broadcasters are trying to encrypt everything when this new standard takes over. We've been fighting that. I'll put information about that fight down below in the video description because there is a public comment period at the FCC right now about this issue. And this is the sort of stuff that will go away if the broadcasters get their way. Now what I'm doing here is looking at the home screen of the app. And as you can see here, we've got a couple of our layouts already saved. And if you click on one here, it'll spin, spin it up and get everything going. It's amazing actually how fast it comes up. Now this Apple TV is the newest one, so it is pretty quick. Um, but I was very impressed with just how quickly I can jump around to different templates here. So if you've got different channels that have different types of games on, depending on the night, you don't have to spend time building this. You build it and save it once and then pull it up when you want to watch again. And then it's easy enough to go back to the home screen here and select a different layout uh, with different shows if you want to do that. So I can uh, go here to maybe this one and pull it up. Even though we've got similar channels here, you get the idea. And it just spins right back up here. So pretty cool. It's coming along, I think, very nicely. Uh, you also have a nice program guide here. And this will take a little bit of time to load depending on how much you have to watch. Sometimes it gets frozen and if you jump out and jump back in again, it works. So maybe we'll do that real quick. Uh, this is one of the little buggy issues that I keep encountering on it. Um, part of it is that I have my Plex server attached to it and Plex has a lot of channels that might be uh, throwing this off a bit. So let's see if we can get that channel guide up. There we go. And you can see all the channels here that I can tune into. So it looks a lot like a traditional TV guide. In fact, if you don't want to watch four things at once, you can just watch one thing and it's a nice uh, TV tuner to play around with here. Let me show you now how the Plex integration works. Again, this works only on the Apple TV right now, but it will be coming to other devices in the very near future. So if you go into the settings here, you can manage your sources. When you first boot the app up, it will ask you to connect to these sources. And after you can add and change things through the settings menu, which I'm gonna do here. So if I go over to manage sources, you'll see that I've got my Plex server here with some options. If I scroll down, you can see where my HD home run is. One thing that I discovered with the Plex server option is that you need to have a Plex server running on your local network for this to work. I do, of course, but my account was tied to an account with two-factor authentication enabled, and that did not work. So uh, what I had to do is spin up a little Plex server and attach it to another Plex account that doesn't have the uh, two-factor enabled, and it started working for me. He is going to work on this so that you just need the account and not the server. So that will be something that gets updated in the near future. What it will do, though, is it will bring in your over-the-air channels from the Plex server. It will deduplicate them if you also have your HD home run connected. But what I'm going to do here is just turn it off so things run a little faster. But what we're going to keep are what's called the fast channels, which are the streaming channels that Plex provides. And we're, we'll be able to actually tune over-the-air TV right next to streaming channels in one of these grids in a minute. So that's something fun to play with. You have some other source options that will connect up with Tableau Gen 3 and the new Gen 4. So that's another thing you can do on the Apple TV. Google TV and Android TV will be getting this in a few weeks. So on the Android side, it's only the HD Home Run. The Apple TV and other iOS devices right now have these multiple source options. So we've got all this connected here. So why don't we go back to our grids and we'll make a grid with both an over-the-air source and some streaming sources here. So what I'm going to do is maybe keep uh, this one as over-the-air along with this one. And then here we will add in one of the streaming channels. So I'll click on the edit. And what you'll see when you have your Plex server successfully connected is the option here for streaming TV. So if we go down there, we will see it. And Plex has like 680 streaming channels now, so there's quite a bit. Um, but what I can do is just find something safe to watch here. Let's see if we can find something that'll work. Uh, that's also not on regular over-the-air TV. Uh, I don't know. Let's do uh, Stargate. So I'm going to hit Stargate here, and this will start streaming inside of this window. I have found that sometimes it's a little on the slow side to spin up here. It was actually pretty quick. So your mileage will vary based on 
uh, whatever factors are leading one platform or device to spin up quicker than the other. Uh, upstairs on my older Apple TV, it was taking a really long time for it to come up, but here it looks like it's super fast. So I can scroll through the list here and find something else to stream up. And when we get that going, um, what's cool is that we can basically integrate some of these free streaming channels with um, what we're doing on over the air here. So we'll get that one going. So now I've got two uh, Plex fast channel streaming. You will still get the ads, of course, alongside two over the air things coming in as well. So pretty cool. And again, this is just a starting point, um, but it seems like a pretty fun app. Why don't we take a look at it running right now on my phone, and then we'll take a look at the Android version. All right, so here it is running on my iPhone. I've got it, of course, in vertical orientation, but I can uh, flip it around and go horizontal. I can also click on one of the windows here and make it full screen, so you can jump in and out that way. So it's got all the same features, but it runs on the phone. And of course, this will also work on an iPad too. So let's take a look now at the Android version. Again, this version is a little more limited in that it only works with the HD Home Run and not the other stuff we just looked at. But let's connect up here and see how it works. So here it is tuning into the four stations that were set up on it last time. And it looks like it is all up and running here. And then I can go full screen and have it work fairly similar to what we had on the Apple TV. Again, I can click on one of these windows individually and zoom it in, although it is a little more sluggish here. I am using the Walmart OnBox, and the reason why I'm using this and not my NVIDIA Shield, which is much more powerful, is that at the moment, the NVIDIA Shield keeps locking up with this app. This is one of the many issues he's got to deal with on the Android side, where you've got a lot of different types of installations and different types of hardware and different types of operating system versions to deal with, but the on 4K here does seem to work. It just doesn't feel as elegant and smooth uh, as it does on the Apple TV. But here you go, it works pretty well, and you can play around with it on both platforms and see how it works for you. So there you go, this is the MultiView app. I will put links to where you can find it in the video description. Again, it's early days here. It's still a little rough around the edges. You're going to encounter bugs, but the developer has been very eager uh, to step through and troubleshoot things with me, and I'm sure we'll be eager to do the same with all of you as you start playing around with it. The uh, demo version is free, and what you get is three 15-minute sessions with it before they ask you to pay for it, and you can watch a single channel for free uh, so you can, I think, get a little bit of time with it to see if it works for you. And if it does, I think it might be a great way to keep track of all of the different sports that you're trying to watch on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. So good stuff here. Check it out. No ongoing subscription required. And I think it's got a lot of potential to be a very useful application. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.